Presentation with these police officers that have not allowed me to, to have any. I, uh, I don't know what this is all about. Here comes the bullet and the president's been shot at and we're on the air. TV news came of age in November 1963. The country was robbed of its leader. And three days later, his accused assassin was murdered in front of millions of Americans. Now, nearly 30 years later, the men who brought you that stunning video live, who made us all eyewitnesses to history, will tell you what really happened that fateful weekend to Lee Harvey Oswald. I didn't shoot anybody, sir. I haven't been told what I'm here for. Do you have a lawyer? No, sir, I don't. I, just I found that. out that they had apprehended Oswald and had taken him to the Dallas City Jail. Did he confess, sir? Has made a statement? He has not confessed. He has made no statement. Charges of murder have been accepted against him. I was then assigned to go directly to the Dallas police station, and I, in effect, became a police reporter for the first two or three days. This crowd here is waiting to see Oswald in the event he is brought in for further interrogation. Come on, President. No, they're taking me in because of the fact that I live in the Soviet Union. I'm just a patsy. President. Oswald was regularly moved from place to place and I hate to say paraded in front of the press, but he was made available to the press. The job now going on at Dallas Police Headquarters is the slow, hard-going work of building a case against 24-year-old Lee Oswald. Accused I really don't know what, what the situation is about. Nobody has told me anything except that... The I'm adrenaline just was unbelievable. I mean, what newsman would want to walk away from this story? The suspect, sir, is this the man you believe killed President Kennedy? I think we have the right man. We want to say this, that this investigation has been carried on jointly by the FBI, the Secret Service, the Rangers, and the Dallas Police Department. Captain Fritz has been in charge. They wanted to hold right there for just a second. Could you hold him in the doorway? When you get him in the doorway, while we probably were coming quite close to impinging on this man's civil rights, the role of being an ethical, moral arbiter is not given to a television director in a situation like that. You just push everybody and everything to get as much coverage as you can. Right, so you don't have to push. Lock it off. I want to leave it off. Lock it off. The Dallas Police Department had a rather difficult time carrying on, I'm sure. We had camera cables strung through the chief's office, believe it or not, through his window, <laughs> through his office. <laughs> Behind the closed doors of the homicide office, Lee Oswald is being questioned about the killing of President Kennedy. The, the Dallas police, for reasons I'll never understand, called a press conference and announced all the details. 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, at which time the plan is apparently to move him to the Dallas County Jail, which is so normal. So everybody time. knew for about 10 to 12 hours that Our this transfer was going to be done and when it was going to be done. We're told there's a crowd of about 2,500 people around the county jail area. This was a scheduled event. This was a media happening. And we had a distinct feeling that we would not see much of him on live TV anymore. police really had their hands full and their idea of security at the time was to transfer him to the other jail in an armored car. There wasn't much attention paid to credentials. Almost anyone could walk in there and show something. And we're waiting here in the basement with uh, other reporters, cameramen, photographers for Lee Oswald. Now starts a whole nother part of this story. I am sitting on a private line to my boss, Chet Hagen. I am telling him, Chet, this is the last time you're ever going to see this guy. They're going to get him out of this Keystone cop situation. They're going to put him in the county jail. The feds are going to have it. And he's going to be treated like a regular person with rights. you got to see him now. And Fred told me that he could hear the old elevator in the city jail as it came down. It was very noisy. I think we ought to have it, Jim, as soon as they can get it to us. So the director told me, rack your turret on the air and get a close-up 
after you've established the uh, scene to start with. Let me have it. I want it. And I hit my button to McGee's ear, and I said, Dallas now. And his introduction was very brief. To Dallas, Texas, and Tom Pettit. Being let out by uh, Captain Fritz. There is the president. There is Lee Oswald. He's been shot. He's been shot. Lee Oswald has been shot. There's a man with a gun. It's absolute panic. Absolute panic here in the basement of Dallas Police Headquarters. The detectives have their guns drawn. When the gun went off, I was trying to see if there was some place I could duck behind or take cover. Now, whether the bullet literally hit Oswald or not, we are not absolutely positive. But there has been a gunshot. A shooting takes place, and Petty is working away. And Hagen says, Fred, I think we'll stick with you. And Freddie said, where in the hell are you planning to go? Lee Oswald obviously has been shot. The witnesses around us here seem to confirm that. It happened so fast. What came in my eyes went out my mouth. Dallas police say they do have a man in custody. They believe he is the man who walked up to Lee Oswald. At Jack Lee Ruby was not an unknown quantity to us because... Ruby seemed to have access to the Dallas police. I do know the man. I would have known him on site. If I'd seen him and noticed him, I would have ejected him. I saw Ruby twice that day. I didn't think anything about it or, or know who he was until after the assassination when the police department showed us a mugshot of Jack Ruby. There's the president. There is Lee Oswald. Point blank range, fired into his stomach. An ambulance now is coming here. Uh, this will be the ambulance to take Lee Oswald. Here he comes. Here's Oswald again. He is now lying very pale on the stretcher. He's being put into the ambulance. Captain, where will he be taken? I'm assuming Parkland Hospital. Parkland Hospital. I remember saying, irony of ironies, he's being taken to the same hospital where they took President Kennedy. And that was the emotion I felt. It was kind of a shock that they were going to take him to Kennedy's Hospital, which is the way we all thought of it at that point. Is he alive, Doctor? No. Let's, let's Dr. Sires make a statement, please. Mr. Oswald died at 1.07, our time, in the operating room of the gunshot wound, which he had received. The last moments were rather hectic. The necessity for a drink is what I felt after it was all over, and the necessity for several drinks, in truth. This is Tom Pettit, NBC News, reporting from the basement of the Dallas Police Department. That's the first time I know of that you were truly graphically there when something happened. And unless something quite extraordinary happens now, history will hold Oswald guilty of the assassination. A lot of people remember that moment in time as if it were burned into their psyche. And I've always thought that the continuing coverage, in a sense, was the psychological glue that held the country together. People suffered together, people endured the pain together because they're all watching the same thing. I went through the whole Kennedy weekend without very little emotion. That was no time to let your emotion run away with you. And I had very little emotion until it was all over. And then I started to cry. and uh, find it hard to stop, you know. November the 22nd, into the history book, stamped forever with the blackness of this day's deed. Thank you, good night. To this day, the video from that weekend tears in our emotions.
the scenes from the assassination, the live shooting of Oswald, the funeral for JFK, they're as compelling and difficult to watch today as they were nearly three decades ago. When Eyewitness Video returns, a young couple takes marriage to new heights, but first, the Oakland firestorm through the eyes of some who survived. We'll be 